as most of you are aware we are organizing this conference in association with krishnamacharya yoga mandiram krishnamacharya yoga mandiram is one of the towering institutions in the field of yoga because it carries the stamp of a lineage as well as fine textual research that has been happening in the institute so uh, we are indeed very honored to organize this uh, conference in association with krishnamacharya yoga mandiram and also have a very senior personality like shri shridharan ji to deliver the inaugural address i now request dr jairaman who is the director of research department at krishnamacharya yoga mandiram to introduce and welcome shri shridharan ji shri guru bhyo namaha uh, it is indeed a great pleasure honor and privilege uh, for me to introduce uh, my own teacher and mentor in the field of yoga uh, shri shridharan sir Uh, he is uh, the senior most faculty in uh, krishnamacharya yoga mandiram krishnamacharya yoga mandiram as was just mentioned by dr vinay chandra was uh, established by shri tkv deshika cha in the year 1976 as a guru dakshina to his uh, father and great yoga acharya shri t krishnamacharya shri shridharan sir uh, is the uh, is presently the senior most trustee in Uh, krishna macharya yoga mandiram and he is a, a mentor uh, and a great yoga therapy consultant and teacher at krishna macharya yoga mandiram for so many decades and uh, he had uh, an illustrious uh, career as a merchant banker in a public sector bank and then uh, yeah as i mentioned he ha- he directly learned under uh, yoga acharya shri t krishna macharya and he became a student of shri t k v deshika char in 1980s and then learned the nuances of yoga in the gurukula system directly for over uh, three decades during which uh, he learned uh, um, not only texts but also so many intricacies of uh, the practice of yoga and its application to to address various uh, health conditions and uh, towards uh, self uh, personality development and evolution and uh, shri sridharan sir is also an expert in uh, vedic chanting Uh, and healing mantras which he learned directly in a traditional uh, manner learned under his teacher and uh, he was the managing trustee of krishnamacharya yoga mandiram for about 8 years uh, by which the activities of uh, krishnamacharya yoga mandiram further uh, uh, developed and expanded and uh, reached out to the world at large and uh, so uh, he he is a very popular teacher uh, in india and international uh, in uh, international platforms and arena and uh, he had anchored so many special programs combining ancient uh, uh, indian traditional yogic practices and which is applicable in the contemporary context from a yogic perspective and uh, shri shridharan sir has also authored a book uh yogi in uh, saritam that is uh, a life about uh, shri krishnamacharya's life a biography of shri krishnamacharya's life in tamil he has authored the book and he has he has been an invited speaker uh, in uh, so many prestigious uh, uh, yoga platforms um, and uh, shri shridharan sir has was was also a governing board member in uh, the moraji desai national institute of yoga uh, of, the, of the government of india and uh he he also has held so many consultative positions in uh, national and international yoga organizations including uh, indian yoga association and also ayush uh, ministry and uh, so uh, he is a repository he is a, a, a repository of uh, tr- uh, wisdom uh, on yoga uh, both uh, textual and also uh, the tradition the living tradition Uh, so we are indeed uh, very uh, fortunate to have uh, shri shridharan sir for this uh, uh, inaugural keynote address uh, for this uh, seminar or for this conference international conference on hatha yoga so i uh, uh, request uh, shri shridharan sir to address uh, this conference on the topic hatha yoga tradition continuity and innovation namaskaram sir swagatam namaskaram 
thank you dr jayaraman it was too big very elaborate introduction thank you dr vinay chandra um namaste professor nagraj pathuri and namaskarams to all the dignitaries who are sharing the dais and the delegates participants uh i will be sharing the screen and yeah i want to first congratulate <coughs> indic uh, academy and indic yoga in bringing this uh, conference really um i have had i i am still having occasions to be participating in conferences but this is unique and we need such conferences to bring to place the quality of the knowledge to to keep it in place because uh, there are so many things that are happening you know actually as uh, professor nagaraj patodi said you know it has uh, it has become so vast now a lot of people are trying to step in yes it is required but uh, when people would like to make a quick uh, you know um entry as well as to get something out of it very quick in an instant way we get the quality into the problem in the ancient days only the teacher will decide when the student should become a teacher it is not for examinations or just passing through with marks pass marks and all that in our tradition also it is my teacher who said you are going to teach from today in fact i told him i am not ready he said i will take care so we need these conferences more often and i and i request and suggest these two great institutions to put together and from kym side we would be very happy to collaborate and do with this small introduction i'll start with the prayer shri krishna vagish ೀಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾರ್ಯಂಗುರುವರ್ಯಮೀಡೆ ವಿರೋಧೆ ಕಾರ್ತಿಕೆ ಮಾಸೆ ಕ್ಷತಾರಾಕೃತೋದಯ ಯೋಗಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾರ್ಯ ಗುರುವರ್ಯಮಹಂ ಭಜೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸೂರೀ ದಯಾ ಪಾತ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನವೈರಾಗ್ಯಭೂಷಣ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ವಂದೇಗಂ ಯೋಗದೇಶಿಕ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ when i want to start i want to start with my personal experience um in learning yoga the topic given to me i am aware of it i want to enter into this scene from a different angle as uh, dr jayaraman was saying i was a merchant banker and i was got interested into yoga and basically got interested into yoga only to improve myself after reading books but after going through various uh, one or two of the schools i met my teacher deshkachar after reading his book and he was kind enough to take me into his personal fold and started teaching me uh, i was still sharing my time between the bank and the yoga as a yoga teacher also but after my after some time i gave up my position in the bank and became a full time yoga teacher now uh, i i had uh, the privilege to study a lot of text uh, in the original text form including the commentaries and all that well uh, my first point is i was learning asana and pranayama for a long time in the in, in those days and uh, with the teachers like this teacher it is not easy for us to dictate and say please teach me this in fact it has become something like a fashion today for the student to ask the teacher to say please teach me this when are you going to teach me this topic or when are you going to teach me this practice such things cannot happen with teachers like krishnamacharya and etc they know they will sell when 
it has to happen but i took courage to ask him after a longer time maybe around a year or more than that i told him sir that's how we address him sir you have been teaching me asana and pranayama uh, i don't think you have taught me dhyana i would like to learn dhyana from you then he said dhyana uh, okay my father that is his father krishnamacharya he says sandhya vandana is the dhyana uh, then i told him oh i know this is sandhya vandanam i know i have been doing this i was initiated into this sandhya vandanam when i was 11 years as i took on my upanayanam i was given the upanayanam then he said no no what you are doing in sandhya vandana may not be the yogic way and uh, come i'll teach you this that's where it started and uh, what is the revelation is uh sandhya vandana is a vaidika tantrika karma that is what sri t krishnamacharya says that is um, a vedic ritual and it through apart from apart from giving me the idea that this ritualistic one vedic ritual which i have been doing as a vedic ritual with all uh, with the full belief and uh, was not the yogic way and uh, yes he taught me and uh, we we sat together another very senior student of him he took notes and then from then on he started asking me to teach this to a lot of people but why i am giving this is we all have a doubt as uh, professor nagraj ji was saying where did these asanas and all come from is it only the starting point is only uh, patanjali's yoga sutra or uh, hatha yoga and all that some you will be surprised to see that ct krishnamacharya related ashtanga yoga in sandhya vandanam in his work called sandhya sara and you are seeing on the left uh, two of the pictures in fact uh, uh, there is a series of pictures in which he shows what are the postures which are done in this sandhya vandanam incidentally for those who do not know sandhya vandanam is a ritual which is done with the, the gayatri mantra as the central with the japa of the gayatri mantra it is a holistic meditative model the maha gayatri used there and this is done thrice a day the word sandhya also has a number of meaning but one is at the particular time sandhi when the night meets when the day meets the night <clears throat> when the forenoon meets the afternoon and when the in the end of the day day meets the night meets the day that is the sandhya time actually the time is considered very important because that is the time when sattva prevail, prevails in the atmosphere vandanam is prostrations it is done with the uh, the very gayatri mantra says it is done with savitra Savitru as the uh, Surya as the focus. Now, in this work, Sandhya Saram in Sanskrit, he gives what are all the postures that are there, what are all the pranayamas, nyasas, and he lists them completely, and and says that Ashtanga Yoga is present in this in this Vedic ritual. So. the yoga traces its origins to vedas this we need to bring it back again and again and again so uh, and it is not denied it cannot be denied and it is not denied but it is not fully explored that is the point i am submitting now now vedas in general are divided see how many vedas are there you see we know that it is four in number but it appears to have been more after Uh, the after veda vyasa came into the picture it became rukveda shama and atharva uh, this is known but the whole vedas whether it is any of them they are divided into two parts like karma kanda and jnana kanda in the jnana kanda part you get upanishads all the four of the vedas are giving upanishads um, of them 11 are very important upanishads talks about the jnana kanda in the karma kanda part we have got all the rituals and the rituals are 
not just only to confer certain benefits, but the rituals themselves or to equip the person to be, become eligible for the Jnana Kanta. That is to be understood. In fact, Athato Brahma Jignasa, which is the first sutra of the Brahma Sutra, say for the word Atha and Atha, it, there is a huge amount of commentary which talks about the importance of the Karma Kanda, but to be done, how the karmas have to be done. The karmas have to be performed, and which is the message of Bhagavad Gita also. So in the Karma Kanda segment, we get a lot of rituals in which yoga principles, techniques are found. Of course, the philosophy part of the yoga is found largely in the Jnana Kanda, which is the Upanishad, about which I will present now. So the principles of asana, pranayama, for example, the sandhyavandana, the main important activity is to offer agya to the argyam to the sun by reciting the Gayatri mantra. It is done with a standing posture. Uh, more or less like what you are seeing on the left, but a bit different. Now in the left, the first picture is Krishna Macharya is now doing a pranayama and getting ready to make an offering to the Argya to the sun. And he used to say, he has given uh, extensive workshops on this when uh, Trishmacharya himself has given. And he used to say, how we have to keep our body position. That is what we lack, we live. And mindfulness is not there in most of the Vedic rituals when we do them. For example, any other Vedic ritual also, not only this, uh, sometimes uh, those who do Pitra Karmas, they will be asked to sit in a particular posture which will resemble and give a particular posture of asana. Even when we are making the rituals, we have to do a lot of pranayamas. So the Karma Kanda itself is the starting point, but you, we may not get the same names of the postures there, but the, the idea of doing posture starts from there itself. Now, the parampara is what is very important in yoga. So the Vedic knowledge itself was passed down through a parampara only, lineage. Lineage of teacher to a student. That is why even today, we always prostrate to Veda Vyasa. And uh, Vyasa Purnima is done because from Veda Vyasa only it has come through parampara. The Vedic knowledge, whether it is chanting, whether it is adhyayanam, or whether it is Upanishads learning, they come through parampara. And it is continuing to be done in India even now. The parampara type of education has a lot of advantages. And this itself needs to be explored. As Professor Nagraj was saying in the morning about the parampara type of education, the lineage, how it is passed on. In these cases, the first teacher is called Ishwara. Of course, there are various ideas about this, uh, the Ishwara. I took this because the Padanjali's Yoga Sutra considers the Ishwara supreme being. And it says, There are a lot of uh, such ideas. In the Bhagavad Gita, uh, we know Lord Krishna is an avatara, and he is himself the teacher. Uh, Yogi Shara, and he is the first teacher also there. Now, uh, there is there are verses depending on the parampara. For example, we recite a verse called uh, Guru Bhyas Tad Guru Bhyas Namo Vakamadhi Magi Guruni Magi Chatatra Dyo Dampati Jagatampati. This is what we recite. We say, let me prostrate to my teacher and his teacher and lineage taking up to the first couple. Now, the lineages, interestingly, evolved based on certain divinities also, devatas. So, Yeshwara is a common word. Uh, so, devatas also, the divinities just did not spring off like that, but they came in the devata segments. The main three among them are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. All of us know, called the Trinity. And they are given certain, they are assigned with certain uh, positions uh, and characteristics as well as certain responsibilities in the evolution, creation, uh, as well as sustenance and dissolution, etc. 
So yoga lineages can also be traced to these three divinities. That is how Trinity trinities. Now let us look at the Yagnavalkya Samhita. He traces it to Brahma. In fact, Yagnavalkya says, uh, when Gargi is asking the question to Yagnavalkya to say, please teach us yoga, he says, he, he closes the eyes and says, I will recall when I met Brahma and asked him the same question and whatever he gave me, I will present to you. So for Vishnu, Srimad Bhagavad Gita is the one and because Bhagavad Gita is considered as a yoga shastra. Um, and he also says that this yoga shastra was lost, which was given to Vivaswan. And uh, from there it was from Manu to Manu. And Padanjali's yoga sutra in some segments like uh, our parampara, it is considered also to be in the lineage of Vishnu for the reason is Padanjali is Ananta, the serpent god who is serving the Vishnu. Even though there is no direct mention about it in the Yoga Sutra. Let us come now to the Shiva. For Shiva, one of the trinities, the yogic lineage is called Natha Sampradaya. As the first guru is addressed as Adi Natha. The other gurus in this lineage are also called Matsyendra Natha, Goraksha Natha. There is a story, as most of you might know, for those of you who do not know that, the origin of this starts uh, when the teaching takes place between Shiva to Parvati in the presence of um, a Kailash with Manasarovar. In the Manasarovar, a fish is hearing this story, is hearing these teachings. Nobody else is there. But the, his fish, which normally moves, which is its characteristic, does not move. And at the end of the teaching, Shiva takes this Matsya fish and gives a life and says that this fish will go, will take a form and will go and pass on this teachings. This is a very, the story is known. And that's why he gave the name of Mashyendranatha. Hatha Yoga is the name given to the set of techniques given through the teachings. So the teachings come under the Natha Sampratya only. But the Hatha Yoga is the name given to the set of techniques. I would call this a name of the model or protocol. For example, we will take Sandhya Vandanam. Sandhya Vandanam itself is a model of meditation. It's like a protocol. So the idea of a protocol existed even in the ancient days. In fact, most of the Vedic rituals are in the form of protocol only. There are, there are very clear ideas as to where one should put everything. There are manuals. Most of the uh, Vedic um, uh, Karmakanda literature, uh, which are coming in Pancharatra, Vaikanasa, uh, all these Agamas, there are also yoga, yoga things there in that. They are all giving a very wide idea of the protocol model along with, they are all Vaidika Tantrika, uh, because mantras will be there. And tantras relate to, to the yogic postures, breathing, and uh, as well as the various nyasas and all mudras, so basically, Hatha Yoga is the name given to the protocol. So it is coming into the Sampradaya, which is more important. Now, the dictionary meaning of the word Hatha is force. Somehow there is general understanding that Hatha Yoga means asanas, and that too done with some force. I am saying this because I have myself come across uh, once long back, very long back, when I visited Singapore, uh, I was going, to, going through a road and I found uh, Hatha Yoga taught here. I was surprised and said, what Hatha Yoga is taught? Then I, I took the interest to go and find out what's happening. Uh, I asked him, what are you teaching Hatha Yoga? He said, no, no, we teach only postures. And that too, not even breathing, with breathing. I said, uh, only postures. So the idea that Hatha Yoga means asanas only and that too to be done with some force, some monks have kept in. But I'm not saying that everyone is talking about it. There are, there are some general understanding. That's what Professor Nagaraj again, I to quote him, say that suddenly when there is an explosion and um, there is a demand, maybe there is sometimes certain uh, general understandings that come on account of it, which we need to correct. But if you, if you will, let us take the origin, the first sloka which uh, Jairaman recited, Shri Atinathaya Namostu Tasmai 
केनो पतिष्ठा हट योग विद्या विभ्राजते प्रोन्नतराज योग सो आदिनाथ द टीचर नमः देन इट टॉक्स अबाउट इन द फर्स्ट श्लोक इट सेल्फ द हट योग इज समथिंग विच लीड्स टू राज योग so to end it with hatha yoga itself this is the idea it stops with hatha yoga it is actually leading to raja yoga so hatha yoga is a practice part of it which is called the sadhana and raja yoga is the siddhi part of it sadhya or siddhi part of it in fact to correctly put it it is siddhi part not sadhya siddhi so what is made sadhya is sadhana the raja yoga is a siddhi part of it i need to make a correction there siddhi part of it is raja yoga which is comes in the fourth chapter in the same thing happens in uh, yoga sutra also you have the second chapter which talks about sadhana pada then vibhuti pada so hatha yoga is a set of practices sadhana which leads to siddhi of raja yoga in fact in the josna commentary raja yoga is explained as sarva vritti nirodha lakshanam which is which is the same as the yoga chitta vritti nirodha now comes the idea why the hatha yoga uh, origin and he also says uh, why this was given by somebody like swatma rama and others is bahumata brantya bahumadadvante rajayogam majanatam hatha pratipikam dhatte swatma rama prapakara bahumataha mantra yoga he says in josna सगुण ध्यान निर्गुण ध्यान मुद्राधिबिधिस्टेडिकारी particularly people with yutita chitta uh, they need something like a hatha yoga to get into raja yoga the idea of this yutita chittam and samahita chittam comes in the yoga sutra also in vyasa bhashya when he says why the second chapter the first chapter itself is samadhi samadhi pada is enough what is the need for a second chapter the vyasa bhashya for the second chapter beginning itself says that the first chapter is meant for those samajita chitta people yuddhita chitta people need it and that is why we get a second chapter so the development is the there is an intended purpose of the name and the lakshana characteristic distinction brought about generally by a definition in joining so here the definition is joining of two energies ha and tha so we need to look at the definition to understand it in fact there are so many definitions for the word yoga itself if we take upanishad hatha yoga uh, if we, if we take upanishad for the word yoga tam yoga miti manyante sthiram indriya dharanam so kathopanishad says that so if we go to bhagavad gita yoga ha karma sukal kaushalam samatvam yoga uchyate dukkha sanyoga viyogam yoga miti avidiyate so three definitions comes in bhagavad gita and puranas also uh, gives ideas of uh, yoga sutra yoga's definition and yoga sutra uh, gives the special definition of uh, yoga chitta vritti nirodha now so such definitions only will give an idea about what is the real meaning of the word knowledge and practices are never stagnant and it has been evolving it continue to evolve more so in the case of practice based knowledge such as yoga now i want to give this and fact actually this could have been put in a cyclical way everything we want to learn first and starts with some knowledge we look at an object we look at anything we get an idea what is this some name is given this is a mouse this is a computer this is a... so immediately we get first thing that we need to know is we must have an idea with the idea with that knowledge 
or something exists. The use of this is there. Then an interest gets created, itcha. And then with the interest, we start with learning. We have to learn, particularly in these types of uh, yoga or whether we take yoga, Vedas, uh, uh, or, or any art and other things, including uh, Sikhit Chakrama, etc. Learning is important. From learning, we go to practice. The learning and practice, the learning is provided by the teacher, Acharya, for that matter. Then it comes to practice. Practice gives a knowledge. The practice-based knowledge and the knowledge which we have in the beginning are not one and the same. They are not one and the same. And this knowledge is that knowledge which is very, very important. And that only makes one eligible to become a teacher. The first knowledge alone will not make one eligible to become a teacher. Difference between the first knowledge and the last knowledge is also due to the individual special characteristic based on latent impressions and vasana. That is where we are going to have the practice in done in a such a way, which our teacher will give it to us, that it will remove the vasanas which are not required. Some of us, some of us would have would be born with good vasanas. In fact, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna that uh, even if you if you don't attain, continue to do yoga, but you don't attain or go to the goal, you will be born in a lineage of the uh, yogic family. Suchinam, Srimatam, Gehe, Yoga, Brattaha, Abhijayate. So you will be born. So you will be born in a way that somebody may come into uh, the practice part of it, learning part of it at a different stage. Janma, Voshati, Mantra, Tapaha, Samadhi, Jaha, Siddhaya, First Sutra of the Fourth chapter of the Yoga Sutra. So now, what is the development in the Hatha Yoga segment is Hatha Yoga has a continuity through a lineage of teachers. In fact, in the uh, in the lineage of teachers, in the Hatha Yoga Pratipika text, uh, it talks about four verses are giving the lineage of teachers with names. Our when when we were studying Hatha Yoga Pratipika. Uh, that they will take a few minutes to explain this. And I remember our teacher explaining this. He says, Sri Adinata, Matsyendra, Sabhada, Ananda, Bhairava, Sauringi, um, Meena, Goraksha, Virupaksha, Vileshayaha, Thaneri. I'm passing on some of them. Allah Maha, uh, some, some of the names. Uh, he, and there are names of uh, women who have been in this lineage. So it is passed on through teachers. The ultimate purpose of yoga, let us go back, uh, is the removal of suffering, dukkha. Without this, no, nothing can be called as yoga. It should finally serve this purpose. Kayam dukkha managatam, dukkha sayoga vyogam which is achieved through a state of mind of discriminatory knowledge. That is what Sankhya Karika, Sankhya says that. And <clears throat> so it, it is not done through any other means. That is why yoga is considered as one of the important means. In fact, the philosophical, the darshana part of yoga also addresses this mainly. The paths are different, but the aim is the same. <clears throat> the practice of yoga brings in multiple benefits, which includes good health, how the, I am now going into the idea of how the development has taken place. Good health is absence of illness and fitness, shasta. In fact, we are, whenever we do Bhadran Karnevi, we are asking for shasta. Over years, these two benefits have been receiving great attention among the seekers. This is where in the development of either Hatha Yoga or Yoga, the most important point is the benefits that these two benefits, particularly illness and fitness, what we are now having, we are now passing through is the therapy, which is very important, good. But what happens is people stop and consider that yoga means only to removal of certain illnesses. In fact, we have, we in Kishumajar Yoga Mandra, we get day in and day out people who come and take uh, the yoga for uh, either illness or fitness. And uh, they even they don't even wink, I ask what is the ultimate purpose of yoga? 
sometimes they even stop doing yoga after their illness is over so what has happened is the full understanding and knowledge is not found and that is where we need to give back we need to go to the roots to bring such types of seminars and other things will help continuity techniques and principles of hatha yoga continue to be used though not fully in fact the hatha yoga nath sampradaya appears to be continuing there in the north of india uh, where there are mats which uh, which continue to be giving the uh, tradition of the hatha yoga <clears throat> but lot lot of the techniques and principles of hatha yoga have been taken out and i am going to present you how they are given tk recommended and taught hatha yoga pratipika in fact uh, to share you share an information our my teacher deshka chara our teacher who is the founder of krishna jari yoga mandiram was an engineer by profession he did not take to yoga in his younger years uh, but he came to know about his father's uh, you know he is a celebrity in yoga only much later and then he said he to, goes to his father and ask him please teach me yoga then he says okay please come after some time is the first thing this guy used to tell is he did not teach him yoga sutra he did not even teach him the text called yoga ragasya but he taught him only hatha yoga pratipika he says at 3:30 in the morning he says ashri adinaka yeah, like that he will start so the hatha yoga pratipika was the first text that was given to this guy by his teacher and father krishnamacharya later he learns a lot of such things but in ki krishna macharya omitted some of the portions like ketri vajrovali takti jalanam called them as the va uh, you know uh, part which need, which need not be taken va matara like that but he recommends bandha and he insists that without the knowledge and practice of bandha pranayama will not give the desired results in yoga ragasya uh, one of the text he he says that yoga traditions have been developing and continue to develop and hatha yoga techniques and principles are found in them largely now where is the innovation uh, innovation is adaptation of the tools to call the individual needs to meet with the individual calls for the innovation innovation <clears throat> um, necessity is the mother of innovation it's a very proverb that we all have heard so necessity comes from the individual calls individuals are asking for certain thing which includes therapy and others so there has been some adaptation and these adaptations of the techniques or the innovations that have gone in the hatha yoga field i am going to present some of them example let us take this mahamudra which is very important and uh, lot of you may be surprised to see that because it finds a very extensive use in therapy uh, we have to use and our teacher has given us some nice technique whereby the same mahamudra can be done in a cot with a leg spread and one leg bent and put on the feet and it gives the same it is supposed to give the same benefit because we call this as a form this is function there is a form for all the postures or uh, including pranayama there is a function that we have to get out of it so we get the function out of this moola bandha for that matter we can we consider moola bandha is not very easy so sometimes we may have to teach moola bandha for someone who is very sick sometimes even in bed so what we will do is we will ask the person to exhale at the end of the exhale we will ask the person to say om like that and you will see that automatically the moola bandha will slowly set in by function hatha yoga's main contribution is in the area of therapy which we need to we will probably be exploring in a large way use of pranayamas for therapy according to t krishnamacharya a great yoga therapist sikitsha prakarana he has got he has, he has got it in yoga ragasya he says it is pranayama which is the most important part of therapy and it has to be samantraka which is not there in the hatha yoga of course but he recommends samantraka that's why i put it in the bracket but pranayama for therapy in fact the hatha kumbhaka are largely therapy only and they are addressing on the basis of as professor ragra today morning said i have to quote him again he is talking about the link between ayurveda and yoga that is where it says in fact uh, the shitali is a pitta hara ujjayi 
is a kapahara the surya vedana is a vatahara so that is how the pranayama is used for therapy purposes it sends a subtle message on sequencing also uh, which i wanted to share with you uh, you see why if there is a sequence that is given uh the, like first the first chapter talks about uh, the asanas also called pitam the second chapter of the hatha pradipika talks about pranayama also called kumbhaka the third chapter is talking about mudras and the fourth is talking about nada anusandana this appears to be a sequence but even among in them there are some subtle message of sequencing which i am presenting to you what is the aim the aim is to bring and keep the prana in the sushumna nadi that which is the block or hindrance is kundalini this is to be the most important this is the base the base of this entire teaching and the prana you have to only take prana into sushumna that is the end period the one will get into that state of mind but this kundalini has to be uh, aroused so for example let us take matsyendra pitam so the mashyendra pitam or mashyendra asana is called mashyendra pitam it helps in the arousal of kundalini which is given in the first chapter 27 if you look at the posture it is a twist where one leg is forward or kept bent and the other leg will be bent and kept straight so person will be twisty generally after a twist in sequence in our in our parampara we always have a sequencing we have postures arranged in a particular way not in a random way uh, recently i had occasion to talk about it in a forum where someone was just presenting asanas in a random way i said no please present them in a sequential way because they have not been given in text they have to be learned only from a teacher directly so paschimottana asana helps in sending the prana who oh, you have you have bigger arrows to the kundalini but now something has to be done to send the prana in it is pavanam pachima vahini gachati so the commentator says here the pachima vahini means going to the back doesn't mean going to back it is going into throwing into sushumna let us take the mahamudra and mahamudra which comes in the third chapter it is also supposed to get the arouse arouse kundalini and udyana bandha helps in throwing the prana into sushumna we we do mahamudra along with the practice of the three bandhas whereas it is not stated there in the text directly sometimes it will be stated in the commentary now i am ending up with the idea the yoga of krishna materia for example t krishna materia fetched from various traditions he actually went to the himalaya and learned under a great teacher called ram mohan brahmachari and he comes down and then he he extensively goes to places to learn and he says uh, even the uh, the shrinkeri mat uh, had a lot of teachers yoga teachers there and lot of postures were there how many postures were there he talks about it in his yoga makaranda and then he gets uh, he gets a uh, hold of the text called yoga ragasya uh, which in under special circumstances uh, which is supposed to be uh, from nathamuni uh, a great uh, vaishnavite uh, sage and he puts them together so on the one hand he considers yoga sutra as one of the important uh, text and he always calls patanjali as bhagavan and he takes that he, he takes important part from hatha yoga he is also talks about yoga yagna valkya samhita we have learned that bhagavad gita and then yoga taravali um, and finally yoga ragasya all of them he puts together and a tradition starts developing out of it the traditions continue to develop based on the experience knowledge of the yogis so <clears throat> is a great opportunity to learn the important uh, aspects of this great uh, uh, great uh, technique called hatha yoga um, and with this uh, i am very happy i thank uh, uh, dr vinay chandran and dr jayaraman and professor nagaraj and others uh, in making me to uh, talk on this as as a keynote address and uh, hopefully i have put some important aspects in front of you based on my experience thank you very much
you very much uh, sir for your uh, very insightful and context setting uh, talk uh, so in terms of the, the title of the talk was hatha yoga tradition continuity and innovation and all these three dimensions you have you have shed uh, light uh, in terms of establishing the vedic origins very firm uh, vedic uh, moorings of uh, this hatha yoga tradition be it the karmakanda or the sandhya vandana practices or be it its darshanic uh, background or the hatha yogic uh, natha sampradaya so in that traditional setup you have uh, underlined the traditional moorings of uh, hatha yoga and then in continuity dimension you mentioned about what is to be uh, accepted and what is to be uh, kept aside for example like vajroli etc or not the need of the time as time progresses whereas the importance of bandhas continue to remain so in the terms of continuity you highlighted that and from the point of view of innovation you mentioned a lot of important ideas with regard to hatha yoga be it uh, adopting the yoga for the needs of the individual as dukha is individual or suffering is individual yoga needs to be adopted for individual requirement and you also mentioned about uh, the form and function dimension in adopting this uh, aspect and then sequencing vinyasa aspect and finally when you mentioned that uh, uh, acharya krishna acharya men uh, uh, assimilated or in the sense he brought together various streams of understanding and then presented it as applicable to the current time so assimilation is the key for uh, for the, uh, the current progress in 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 terms of practice and learning of hatha yoga so thank you once again uh, very much for uh, this insightful address sir we look forward uh, 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 to uh, the other speakers to imbibe or kind of take the cue from this context setting talk and uh, continue their presentation thank you once again from uh, yeah with deep gratitude sir thank you